a bit half and half this time because while there was a Grand Prix on, there is you know, some more important stuff going on that needs addressing. Alright, roll titles. A pretty intense Hungarian Grand Prix. The kind of race that makes me wish I had Sky. But having Sky would mean listening to Crofty suck off Lewis and Russell for two hours, and... Yeah, I don't wish I have Sky. So this makes two races in a row that a Mercedes has been in contact with a Red Bull. Valtteri Bottas's wee bowling, and... Other memes. I mean, yes, it was Valtteri at fault. He screwed the hell up. He locked his brakes on a greasy track. He hit Lando, got the 7-10 split with the two Red Bulls, and... Once again, the conspiracy theorists are out. Toto told him to do it. Wingman just got his 2022 deal. Mercedes going to punt Red Bull off every race because they can't win and so on. It's getting tiresome. Just because contact is made, it doesn't mean it's deliberate. Otherwise, all those red flags at Alton Park yesterday would have been investigated and people would have been banned from multiple races, but we'll get to that in a bit. Although I will say that Hamilton sitting there on the grid on his own was pretty funny. It was like being in a iRacing IR01 race session. But thinking about it for a second, whether he pitted or not, Lewis would have most likely been at the back anyway. And here's why. It's that bit off what culture wrestling where it's like, here's why, I'm Simon Miller, whatever it is. So Lewis would have entered his pit box first, given that he was the first car in the train and his box was at the start of the pit lane. I'll do a, a graphic so you can visualize it. So let's assume he stops and takes a 2.2 second stop, which is a figure I've just pulled out of my ass. Due to the unsafe release rules, he'd have most likely had to wait for the entire field to pass him because it was so grouped together, because people like Russell, Latifi, Mazepin, Raikkonen would have had to go down the pit lane to make their stops. So now Lewis is one of the last cars to leave the pits, despite being the first to enter because, you know, he went in first and, and so on. So by starting on the grid as he did, rather than joining everybody else in the pits, he probably got more clean air than he would have done pitting. So, I mean, people are going to say it's a mistake, but it probably wasn't in the end. So all that stuff with unsafe release and things like that and pitting later in the pit lane, it's how people like Latifi went from 18th to 3rd, but, you know, the crashing at the start had something to do with it, but, you know, it helped. And then you got Verstappen carrying on with half the side of his car missing and he struggled, as he would, to overtake Mick Schumacher in a much inferior Haas. But he got by eventually, around the outside of turn two and into three, and could have done without hitting him twice in the process, but, you know, I don't see what people are complaining about, to be honest. I've got DMs making it sound like Max had gone full Jason Plato on him. But that's the nature of the Hungara rink. It's Monaco without the walls and a track where it's much easier to defend than, say, Silverstone Spa or Monza. But with Max and Mick and later Hamilton and Alonso, we saw some decent racing and Alonso probably solidified Ocon's first place thanks to that defensive driving masterclass. It was... But obviously a shout out has to go to Ocon for his first win, and as a bonus fact, it's the first time French drivers have picked up a win in consecutive seasons since the 1995 and 1996 seasons. In 1995, Jean Alesi won for Ferrari at Montreal, and a year later, Panis won at Monaco. And then in 2020, Pierre Gasly won at Monza, and now Ocon yesterday in Hungary. So when was the last time two drivers scored their debut win in successive seasons? Button 2006, Hamilton 2007? Or maybe Hamilton 2007, Vettel 2008? Or even Vettel 2008, Weber 2009? Maybe? I don't know. But, you know, it, it, it's there. I, I, like to, I like to put the fun trivia into things. But then more drama as Vettel, who finished second for Aston Martin, was then disqualified for having too little fuel in the tank. Which has got people upset because Bottas only gets a five place drop for wiping out four cars and Vettel gets excluded entirely for having too little fuel, so where's the justice? The rules are written pretty clearly under Regulation 6.6.2 of the regulations. After the race, every car must be able to provide a sample of one litre of fuel to be used by the FIA for checks. The stewards determined to apply the standard penalty for technical infringements. It is no defence to claim that no performance advantage was gained, because they reckon it's 
0.35 of a second per lap per one kilogram of fuel used or words to that effect. So when the FIA came to take the fuel out of Vettel's car, they could only take 300 milliliters out of the tank, despite Aston Martin claiming there was 1.14 liters remaining. The stewards then said that the team was given several opportunities to attempt to remove the required fuel from the tank, although it was only possible to pump 0.3 liters, 300 milliliters, out. But the key word across those statements being standard penalty for technical infringement. The FIA basically says if you can't provide one litre of fuel, you're disqualified. And Vettel didn't supply enough fuel, so he got disqualified. The same way that Renault was disqualified for their automatic brake bias system a couple of years ago, was it? Something like that? Bottas, meanwhile, was done under sporting regulations, not technical regulations. And Kimi and Gio were done under pit lane rules, which for safety purposes, as you can imagine, are pretty damn strict. Now Aston Martin are saying they will appeal this decision, and I've actually got the jug they will be using to prove that they can get a litre out. And still on the subject of Bottas, because that's all people are talking about, and it's the main point, you know, he wiped out four cars, people are actually calling for a race ban as they were for Lewis last time out, because that's what Grosjean did in 2012. And it's what Grosjean got in 2012. But while both drivers had caused an avoidable collision in that instance, Grosjean's crash was deemed an extremely serious breach of the regulations which had the potential to cause injury to others. Which is true, he almost took Alonso's head off. And I know this is probably going to sound contradictory given how all last time out I was saying the outcome isn't taken into account, but we have to remember that Grosjean's accident, well I say accident, was nearly 10 years ago and the FIA has made many, many changes since then. You also need to factor in that up until that point Grosjean had been involved in way too many accidents and that one he caused at Spa was the final straw. But like I said last time, I don't know, I don't make the rules. And both the Williams cars scored points, I am so happy. Russell and Latifi, well I mean it's just Russell's luck isn't it? outperforms his teammate for two consecutive years and the teammate scores more points than him. <sighs> but the Hungarian Grand Prix was part of just a mad weekend in general. A weekend that no matter what race you turned on, there seemed to be somebody in the wall. Or, as we saw at Brands Hatch, something much, much worse. At the BARC event on Saturday, there was a touring car race, not the BTCC, but uh, a different, uh, I think it was old, older BTCC cars, well the actual BTCC was at Alton Park, and a crash there sadly resulted in the death of a marshal. So I'm not going to show the crash, obviously, but what happened is two cars were going down the start finish straight, one car ended up on the grass on what would have been the outside of turn one, he vaulted the armco, rode the armco, and then smashed into a marshal's post which resulted in the abandoning of the whole weekend and there were a couple of YouTubers and sim racers that I know that were there. And then we had the Hungarian Grand Prix, which had everything happening there. But in the BTCC event at Alton Park, there were a total of six red flags at that one event. With the Mini Challenge first race having two, and the final race of the BTCC also having two. And saying that, the multi-car crash at the start of the BTCC race 3 at turn 2, Cascades, was almost a carbon copy of what happened at Hungary, to be honest. And I tweeted that this weekend must be cursed or something. You know, every time you looked up, somebody was in a wall. And no doubt there will be questions asked and safety things taken into account. And the sad part is, because you can't factor in every conceivable situation at a race weekend, or just when you're filling out health and safety forms in general... In motorsport, it often takes someone to be seriously injured or worse for changes to happen. It's why the stuff we see on our road cars and in motorsport, the technology on them, is often referred to as the rather dark term, tombstone technology. I'm talking things like seatbelts, airbags, full visor crash helmets, wheel tethers, carbon fibre safety cells, anti-lock brakes and most recently the halo in Europe and the aero screen in America. And because the drivers are the stars of the show, we tend to only focus on the drivers, especially after Verstappen shunt at Silverstone the other week, but these men and women in orange who give up their own time for free to make sure that in those situations drivers get out and are safe, you often forget about them. They they turn up, they make sure the driver's okay, they clear the wreck, the racing goes on, and we, we only see them really when they're needed. 
And often, these men and women are mere metres from the danger zones themselves, sometimes inches. At the Australian Grand Prix in 2001, Ralph Schumacher and Jack Villeneuve collided and a piece of bodywork killed a marshal between turns two and three. At the Italian Grand Prix the previous year, a collision involving several cars at the second chicane killed a marshal, leading Michael and Ralph Schumacher to try and get a gentleman's agreement in place between the drivers the following year to not overtake on the first lap of the Grand Prix. That was, of course, the 2001 race, which itself was mere days after 9-11. In qualifying for the 2015 Bathurst 1000, Chaz Mostert vaulted the wall on the run down to Forest Elbow and wiped out a marshal's post. Now, Chaz broke his leg, but the marshals were uninjured as far as I'm aware. At Silverstone in the BTCC last year, Rory Butcher was tipped out by Matt Neal at Maggots and went backwards towards the barriers and hit the wall in front of a marshal's post, forcing the marshals there to run for their lives. The marshals managed to get away, but Butcher's car was absolutely trashed. But it's not just the marshals. There was a touring car race at Snetterton in 2016, and a start line incident caused Hunter Abbott's car to roll onto its side towards the Armco, where it once again vaulted said Armco and took out a gantry where there was an ITV cameraman filming the race for ITV4. Needless to say, that gantry isn't there anymore. And then there's more recently Sophia Flush at Macau ending up in a similar type of setup. Which, after all the hysteria following Max's accident, it kind of puts it all into perspective. We think about the drivers, but without the marshals, nobody can race. And normally this is the part where I'd be all upbeat and go, so that's a brief review of, but, you know, when someone's been killed and driving standards at Alton Park weren't exactly professional, I'm just going to leave the video there. So I'll just say thanks for watching, and I'll see you all soon for another video. So... Bye.